Greetings, friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sastrovelic. Welcome. The question that I have for you is, might the Muslims be right about New Year's Eve? What about the Church of Rome and other so-called Christian churches? A while back, a religious leader in Turkey publicly condemned New Year's and Christmas as pagan. He said Christmas and New Year celebrations are events where both pagan rituals and capitalist drives are intertwined, the head of Turkey's religious affairs directorate Mehmet Gomez said in a statement. He continued in that statement and he added, What I'll most object to as the religious affairs head is the Christmas consumer economy that causes cultural and identity-related erosion in children, Gomez said. I see mass parties and celebrations similar to a form of revenge people take on the time phenomenon, Gomez said, especially celebrating with drinking, gambling and lotteries. It is impossible to approve of such things. So one who does not claim to be Christian has properly suggested that New Year's parties are wrong and that Christmas influence on children is not positive for children. The Bible teaches that God's year begins in the spring. If you take a look at Exodus 12, verse 2, you would realize that. Did you know that not only were Christmas and New Year is not observed by early true Christians, even Roman Catholics supporting writers condemned the celebration associated with them. Here is the Catholic Encyclopedia report uh, from the Catholic Encyclopedia, volume 11, the year 1911. Christian writers and councils condemned the heathen orgies and excesses connected with the festival celebrated at the beginning of the year. Tertullian blames Christians for who regarded the customary presence called strenae from the word etrenes from the goddess strenia who presided over New Year's Day as mere tokens of friendly intercourse. So around 487... The Greco-Romans seemed to adopt the Feast of the Circumcision on January the 1st. This, however, did not stop all heathen activity anyway. Uh, the Catholic Encyclopedia then notes, and it says, even in our own day, the secular features of the opening of the new year interfere with the religious observance of the circumcision and tend to make a, more ho a mere holiday of that which should have the sacred character of a holy day. St. Augustine points out the difference between the pagan and the Christian manner of celebrating the day. Pagan feasting and excesses were to be expiated by Christian fasting and prayer. So also, the Catholic Encyclopedia in the States, towards the end of the 6th century, the Council of Auxerre, Canon 1, forbade Christians strenus diabolicus observare. The expression strenus diabolicus observare, roughly translated from Latin to English, is observing the new time of the devil. It's likely that the New Year's resolutions are related to prayers and practices once given for the pagan goddess. January the 1st is not a biblical holiday and even the Church of Rome has forbidden some of its attributes as demonic. Very, various uh, older Roman Catholics and uh, Roman Catholic writings seem to condemn modern New Year's celebrations. can also be seen in the passage that I'm just about to read, the passage of uh, uh, the, uh, from the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 3. And uh, it says, Even in our own day, the secular features of the opening of the new year interfere with the religious observance of the circumcision and tend to make a mere holiday of that which should have the sacred character of a holy day. St. Augustine points out the difference between the pagan and the Christian manner of celebrating the day. Pagan feasting and access were to be expiated by Christian fasting and prayer. John uh, 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 J. transcribed, of course, this by uh, W. M. Stuart French, Junior Feast of the Circumcision, the Catholic Encyclopedia, Volume 3. Now, Tertullian, one of the so-called Church Fathers, blames Christians who regarded the customary presence called Strenae from the goddess Strenia, who presided over New Year's Day, 
as mere tokens of friendly intercourse and towards the end of the 6th century uh, the Council of Oxere forbade Christians Christians trenais diabolicus observare. Hence, it appears that the Roman Catholic writings would condemn more modern practices associated with the New Year's celebrations. We also need to know, dear friends, what does the Bible teach on the subject, because the Bible is really the supreme authority that should rule our lives. So, notice what the Bible teaches. Let's go to Romans chapter 13, verse 12. Romans 13.12 The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. Verse 14 But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Then in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 20 we read, Do not make swine bibers or, or with, uh, with gluttonous eaters of meat. For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. And do not drink, do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 1 to 3. Woe to the crowd of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, whose glorious beauty is a fading flower which is at the head of the verdant valleys. To those who are overcome with wine, behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one like a tempest of hail, a destroying storm like a flood of mighty waters overflowing, the crown of pride, the drunkenness of Ephraim, will be trampled. It will be trampled and underfoot. Isaiah chapter twenty-eight, verse one to three. So, a night of drunken revelry is not a Christian holiday and should not be observed by the faithful. The parting drunkard is also specifically condemned as part of those that will not inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 Do you know, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of heaven? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicator, nor adulterer, nor adulterer, nor homosexual, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkard, nor revelries, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord and by the Spirit of our God. Now this is from First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Here we have a bit more for, for Galatians chapter 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Of which, I tell you, behind, just as I also told you in the time past, that those who practice, that those, who practice those things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So this is in Galatians 5, verse 19 through 21. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1. There will be false teachers among you who will teach, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring, and, uh, bring on themselves swift destruction. And many who follow the destructive ways because of the, because or, or at least by some of the Muslim ones, well, uh, and, and, and because many who practice those things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. 
Christians are not to participate in pagan holidays, and especially those that involve drunken revelries. Does not the observance of New Year's Day contribute to blasphemy by the Gentiles, at least by some of the Muslim ones, because many who profess Christ, they keep it? Well, this should never be. Those who are Christians and used to those things are expected to repent. Please repent, First Peter chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. For we have spent enough of our past times in doing the will of the Gentiles, while we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11. Put now, I have written to you, not to keep company with anyone blamed, blamed name, uh, anyone named the brother, who is sexually moral, uh, is covetous, or an idolater, or a, le- or a reveler, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, not even to eat such a person, First Corinthians 11. Now the fact that professors of Christ ignore clear scriptures cause, causes a false version of the way to be blasphemed by the Gentiles. Look at Romans 2.24. And uh, the Turkish leader noticed the falseness of the participation of many who profess to be Christian. So uh, we are to be aware of that falseness and to understand that it's legitimate that a Turkish leader or any other leader will call out nominal Christianity for what it is not practicing in spite of the content of the Christian book such as such as the Bible.